Hello, dear viewers, and welcome to a new edition of the Daily Debate. I'm your host for tonight, Mohammed Abdelrahim. And on this Thursday, His Excellencies President Abdel Fattah Sisi and UAE President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed attended the graduation of the class of 2024 at the Egyptian Military Academy headquarters in the new administrative capital. As Sisi and Ben Zaid witnessed the raising of the Egyptian flag on the Egyptian Military Academy's new home in the new administrative capital, and uh, during a, a special ceremony, the two leaders witnessed several performances by the aerobatic team. The event featured a performance by the graduates of the equestrian course, officers from the Armed Forces Equestrian Club, students from the Egyptian Military Academy and the Military National Team. The paratroopers forces also presented an aerial formation featuring the Egyptian flag, the flag of the UAE, and the Egyptian Military Academy flag displayed in the sky above the ceremony. Earlier on Thursday, uh, a CC had received Ben Zaid at Cairo's International Airport um, as the Emirati president started an official visit to Egypt. According uh, to a statement uh, from the Egyptian presidency, the visit by Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, who is leading a high-level Emirati delegation, aims to enhance between the two nations in all domains. President Assisi highlighted the significance of Sheikh bin Zayed's visit in deepening cooperation and exploring new avenues for mutual benefit. The Emirati delegation includes... General of the UAE Supreme National Security Council, the Presidential Advisor for Strategic Research and Advanced Technology and Ministry and Advanced Technology Investment and Affairs. And uh, addressing the graduation ceremony of the new batch of the uh, Military uh, Academy, uh, His Excellency President Assisi said that every year October comes carrying with it the breezes of victory and glory. These are the days when Egyptians recall the lessons of victory, celebrate the heroes and martyrs and commemorate the great October victories which coincide with the celebration of the graduation of the new batches of students from the Egyptian Military Academy to join the fields of honor and heroism defending Egypt's security and safety after they were prepared according to the best and most advanced military and scientific levels. Sisi added that on such days 51 years ago Egypt's victory that will remain immortal in the memory of this nation and on the pages of its glorious history. A victory that always reminds everyone that this nation, with the cohesion of its people, leadership and army, is capable of doing the impossible no matter how great. CC added that the spirit of October is not just slogans that are said, rather it is latent in the essence of this people and its authentic metal. It appears clearly in times of adversity, expressing the strength of truth, self-esteem, and firmness of will, and history records with words of light that Egypt is dear to its sons, strong with its institutions, towering with its armed forces, and proud of the sacrifices of its sons. His Excellency the President added that what Egypt did in the glorious October War will remain forever a witness to the strength of the will of the Egyptian people and the efficiency of its armed forces and the ability of Egyptians to plan accurately and implement meticulously. The words of His Excellency the President.
back here in Alanai TV International Studios and we are um, happy to have uh, with us uh, foreign relations uh, expert uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Montez. It's a great pleasure to have you uh, with us and uh, Egypt is celebrating one of its um, greatest moments in its modern history, the 1973 October victory. Um, the president had a uh, uh, um, uh, an important speech today. Um, your uh, comment on His Excellency's uh, speech. I believe that okay, the comments are very accurate because it's, uh, to me it's not just a mere victory. You know, 6th of October is not just that, okay, you know, we're creating an event that happened. It's a pivotal moment moment that we restored something lost and Egyptians by default we are not we are not an aggressive nation by all means however we are highly determined we have uh, you know a strong commitment to the integrity of our land unshakably and we actually never give up on this no matter what and I mean it no matter what, because I think, okay, you know, I know some people, they would say, okay, we don't go back to history, you know, no, but I mean it, we go back to history as ancient Egyptians, and so those days till today, we have never done that. We have never forgotten something that about our land. Our land is one thing, one integrity, and by the way, Okay, I think everyone knows we are the oldest nation in terms of integrity of land. Okay, changes have been very, very minimal in the integrity of Egyptian land. And I challenge anyone in the world, historians, geographers, anyone, politicians, that actually would challenge this thing. No, it's one thing, one nation, one land. Okay, and it's been like this for thousands of years, and I mean it for thousands of years. When something happens, okay, for whatever reason, grandparents about that time, and how tough was it like back then these years, mm. okay, and you know, and I wouldn't use the word humiliation, mm. no. Mm. And I think what happened, despite the fact that it was pretty shocking to all Egyptians mm. in 1967, however, okay, as President Sisi said today, it's determination, it's us, it's a firmness. We are very much determined and committed to this. And once again, despite, despite we are peaceful, and I mean it. But however, we turn to something else, totally different defending our land. Our land, and by the way, this is something culturally and sociologically actually well known that those simple farmers mm. are really simple on the outside because actually peasants, you know, they cultivate crops and whatever. However, but when it comes to their land, it's their dignity. Mm -hmm. They never compromise over mm -hmm. this by all means. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. Some people thought in 1967 that Egypt wouldn't come back. There wouldn't actually any chance for Egyptians after 1967 that those Egyptians would do it. And I think our enemy back then, they were kind of arrogant to that extent mm. that they would say, okay, they were pretty sure mm. Egyptians won't, won't be able to make it mm. no matter what. Mm. But Egyptians made it in 1973. Mm. And even that's actually with, I think was pretty shocking to the United States of America herself. Mm. You know, that country, despite the fact that intelligence and the IA and the Mossad on the other hand, and actually they weren't actually, you know, they were taken by surprise. Mm. Like how come those Egyptians actually mm. made it in 1973? Mm. And they were pretty sure, and the reports coming from Tel Aviv, Washington, D.C., mm. okay, reports actually said, no, no way. Mm. They're not going to be able to make it. And we made it in 1970. And I believe that's the message that Mr. President gave today, delivered that kind of message. And he wanted actually to be a constant reminder to everyone in Egypt, no matter the challenges that we face, we can make it. We can overcome, 
okay, whatever challenges. There wouldn't be, I, in, in, my, in my understanding, there would challenge like the one that we faced from 1967 right. to 1973. Six tough years, six years of, uh, of waiting. Uh, the Egyptian public was uh, uh, getting impatient at the end. They wanted to see something happen. Uh, but wouldn't you agree uh, 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 with me, Dr. Montez, that it started with late President Nasser himself? Mm -hmm. I mean, so Egypt didn't wait six years, didn't do nothing for six years, and then suddenly came on the sixth. There was a war of attrition. There were strikes in Elat, elsewhere, uh, a Navy power. There were always... Egypt was, was there throughout the six years. It was not just in 73, but it started with late uh, President Nasser, and then, of course, the hero of war and peace took over uh, President Sadat with his you know, great uh, uh, cleverness and, uh, and master planning uh, um, and of, with the participation of late uh, 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 former President Hosni Mubarak who, was a, uh, who had a major role in, uh, in that war. So, so um, it wasn't you know, six years of doing nothing and then suddenly doing something, right? It was six years of all. We got up quickly, didn't we? I mean, 67 was very tough, very harsh, uh, very difficult on, on the nation itself, not just the army, but the entire nation, the, the people um, uh, and army. And, and of course, when you say the people and the army, I mean, they are one because, I mean, uh, every family had someone uh, to defend yeah. his land or to regain his yeah. land. Uh, Restoring, uh, yeah. And to restore and, and recapture uh, our lost land uh, back then, right? So it started from really, we woke up very early, didn't we? I definitely agree with you, okay? However, we need to highlight a couple of points here. First, we Egyptians, we don't believe in something called one-man show. We are not of this. We don't believe in this. Historically speaking, despite the fact that with all due respect to every leader, of course, we say that, yes, President Gavan Abdel Nasser, President Awar Sadat, okay, former president, uh, different roles. Because 6th of October, I think it wasn't that simple. It wasn't, okay, I think it took us like, it was phasal it in nature. It took the world by surprise. Yeah, yeah. But I think, you know, something else that, okay, President Sisi mentioned today mm. in his word, is that planning. Planning, I think, was something very pivotal in the war. Mm. Okay, we didn't actually act uh, just, you know, out of being emotional mm. about this, despite the fact that we were emotional, of course. Mm. But I think, you know, when it comes to going to war, it's not only about being emotional. Being emotional is one factor, only one factor. Mm. However, you should be fully prepared. Mm. And that's what took our enemy by surprise. They saw soldiers, and they thought that those soldiers were just simple, as I said, farmers or peasants or workers. Mm. Mm. But those actually workers or peasants were highly trained. Okay, much more even, I believe, mastering how to use the latest weapons more than those of uh, the although, other side, the enemy. Although the, the enemy had a technologically more advanced, superior weapons than there was the other. But we still speaking, beat them. Yeah. Comparatively mm. speaking, yes. Mm. Mm. Okay, but once mm. again, mm. let me remind myself and dear viewers that equipment or weaponry is not everything. Mm. Yes, yeah, some people, they may actually say yeah, it's only about weaponry, but we have seen the uh, 6th of October war, and we have seen as well in Vietnam. You know, as for America, you the latest and most sophisticated weapons ever on mm. Vietnamese people, mm. and ended up as one of the most scandalous events mm. in American history. Mm. Same thing happened in 6th of October. Mm. Okay, our enemy had the latest, as you said, and the most mm. sophisticated weapons mm. ever, ever. Okay, and let me actually, you know, go back to a movie that was released last year of Golda, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And in the movie, it's very obvious that... I saw it, a yeah. documentary. Yeah, it, it, no, it's a drama okay. movie, but it okay. highlights some key events. Yeah. Uh, they were I trying to be... I saw a documentary, um, yeah. and, and uh, it was important to watch, I mean, yeah. and to learn about our gr greatness, by the way. I mean, exactly. watching this, I just discovered were, it how proves great we this. were. It shows yeah. everyone that, okay, no Egyptians mm -hmm. were different. Movie. Actually, it was obvious that what reports and of the intelligence, okay, were actually about what, oh, Egypt, uh, Egyptians are preparing themselves. Mm. But, okay, the other side, the enemy, wouldn't believe this. They wouldn't believe. They, 
always actually put it as what well. mm. they don't have enough weapons mm. they are not well trained mm. okay they yeah the spirit of egyptians mm. the morale of egyptians mm. is pretty low mm. and actually they couldn't see us mm. and i believe i have to put it this way till today we are 2024 they still don't get us and they still don't understand egyptians mm. by the way egyptians are different and this is the kind of message I think Mr. President today, today wanted to convey to everyone in the world. We are different. We are different than anyone with all due respect to, you know, everyone right. in the region. But we right. are different. Absolutely. Dr. Montez, as you mentioned, uh, throughout Egypt's history, uh, the Egyptian army has never been the aggressor. Uh, it has, its job has always been to defend its lands, never to transgress on others' uh, 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 lands. This fixed or um, um, policy throughout, I mean, amazing, I mean, for thousands of years, that's what we understand, that this has always been the, the, um, the ideology of, uh, of the Egyptian army. But if you touch our lands, y you, you, yeah. will, you will pay a, a, a dear, heavy, heavy price. Exactly. That has always been the... Yeah. And I think it's, uh, it's in right deep down, you know, it's, it's in our, you know, at the back of our minds, you know, mm. no matter, it's, it has nothing to do with education, it has nothing mm. to do with whatever. Mm. Even a simple Egyptian, mm. a very simple one, mm. gets this and under, understands mm. this very, very well. Mm. And this is something that, you know, I think people should study and should actually put it under some sort of a microscope anthropologically speaking, mm. sociologically speaking, mm. okay, because it's very crucial. It's part of our cult, parcel of our mm. culture that mm. Egyptians, okay, they, their land is something so dear to them and they are very much ready to defend their land wholeheartedly no matter what. And I don't need to remind actually our dear viewers of so many incidents throughout history. Okay, let me actually, you know, go back Oh, the 20th century, I wouldn't go but that okay. back. Okay. 20th century and what happened in the revolution of 1919. Mm. Saad Yes. Mm. Okay, uh, the British, and the, we are talking about the British Empire, by the way, in the, the, one of the strongest in, in history. In the history of the world, yeah. Yeah, and why 1919, it was mm. something that pretty mm. shocking to them as well. Mm. Okay, all over Egypt, Egyptians all over Egypt, we mean it, from Aswan to Alexandria, from Port to Matruh, you know, Everywhere, Egyptians were so mad, and they wouldn't, back then, they wouldn't have imagined, you know, how come the pretty, what, you know, they thought that actually we were passive. And actually, we're not passive. We are patient, but to a limit. Don't push us to that limit, because actually, you push us that far, and you would see a different face from us. And that's what happened in 1919. Mm. And British people and British government, the British crown, Mm. They got, actually, we took them by surprise to the extent that eventually they gave up. Mm. And that was something that I think so remarkable in our history. And we're talking once again about the 20th century. Right. We're not talking about okay, that back. And we have numerous number of incidents that show us very clearly that we are different. We, our land is so dear, as I said. Our dignity, when it comes to our dignity, we cannot be actually like, compromising right we are not that type of people right um, the Middle East and Africa uh, uh, and Horn of Africa region uh, our, our region uh, is full of disputes crises wars how do you see the Egyptian army and the Egyptian diplomacy together I mean those two wings uh, of, uh, of power as the main protector of Egypt and its lands, its soil, its resources, and at the same time of stability and security in the entire region. I'm going to give a simple example and it has to do with what we are celebrating nowadays, the 51th anniversary of the 6th of October. Okay, uh, the victory of 6th of October is so amazing. However, we had another war for a couple of years after 6th of October. And that war with the word of diplomacy. So it wasn't only about 6th of October. Yeah, that was a great victory. Okay, it's undisputable. However, as we put down arms, no, something else 
another war started. A diplomatic war. Yeah, a diplomatic war. Mm -hmm. And I still recall, okay, uh, uh, the former okay, Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Boutros Ghari, mm -hmm. and he was talking about how tough was it like to sit at a table with diplomats. Okay, it was very difficult. And uh, actually, you know, of course, they wouldn't give up that easily, but we got it and we defeated them. That's why I need actually to remind our dear viewers that, okay, we did it twice, not once. Militarily and uh, Exactly, militarily and diplomatically. And this is something that supports actually, you know, what you said, okay, about what uh, nowadays. Nowadays, situation required that, okay, our army to be fully prepared. Fully prepared, I mean it, because situation in the region is so alarming, especially the last couple of days, what's been going on in Lebanon. Iran and Israel, yeah. Yeah, mm. what's going on in Lebanon, the situation mm. between Iran and Israel, so alarming. That's mm. why, mm. and actually, you know, in diplomacy or generally speaking, military leader, military actually personnel, they know what, it. it's called the deterrence. Mm. Okay, because I know that some people have been actually talking about, okay, the expenditure mm. on the mm. army and strengthening our mm. army, latest weaponry, you know, for example, like submarines, like destroyers, like, okay, different types of weapons. However, okay, no, that's pretty crucial because that sends mm. out a certain message to everyone in the region and, and I believe mm. everyone in the world that Egypt is fully prepared Okay, Egypt is working, and, okay, her army always paying to that. So policy doesn't start from scratch. And I believe, and that is my understanding, that foreign and military capability, they work hand in hand. And I wouldn't actually set like a certain theory about when that, for example, the military stars or where, where they always go hand in hand. Mm. So let's imagine that, okay, uh, you did it, you won a war, but you don't have what? Efficient diplomacy. Okay, actually, I believe, yeah, you would actually be achieving something really good, however, to end it up. Mm. Okay, they're right. But Egyptians because have been... Eventually, things will, will end up... Would uh, at a table. On the, on the negotiating table. On the negotiating table. Mm. And wonderful armies. Mm. Okay, the army, I'm talking about, okay, officers, soldiers, and that, right. okay, actually those are soldiers as well. They go, as I said, hand in hand. Mm. Actually, both of them were highly efficient. You know, they are regular army mm. and the diplomats. Okay, mm. you know, as I said, 1973, okay, the war ended. And we actually got into another war and we won that war as well. As uh, His Excellency the President said today, and, and, and this is really... Uh, um, really uh, caught my um, uh, attention. Uh, uh, I'm quoting the president here from today's uh, speech. Uh, it's a victory that always reminds everyone that this nation with the cohesion of its people, leadership and army is capable of doing the impossible no matter how great. Quote unquote. The period of time 57 to 73. Okay, and this and must be a message as well. Yeah, this of course. Message, yeah. Okay, from six, 67 mm. to 73. Mm. By the way, economically speaking, it was pretty tough. Oh. Okay, and I know we're actually going through some tough times economically speaking, eh? the entire world, not only us. However, Egypt back then had been through, and I mean it, you know, statistically speaking, mm. the figures economically speaking back then mm. from 67 to 73, it was pretty challenging. However, Egyptians, as we read about the situation back then, they wouldn't really care about what food, you know, whatever, back then from, 70, from 67 to 73. Yeah, they had a, a, a dear, to precious, uh, uh, lost piece of land yeah. that they want to go, uh, get yeah. back because it's theirs. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the kind of message Mr. Mm. President wanted actually mm. to convey, mm. that it's, it's Egyptians. Okay, yeah, it took them years, and it wasn't easy, it was pretty difficult. Okay, however, actually, you know, their priorities, as you said, a priority, main priority was different. They focused on one thing, one aim, one goal, that to recapture that so dear piece of land that we had lost in 1967. Once again, it's all about what integration, all of us working together, working together, 
and that's very important. We're not talking about, for example, some uh, small circles, and we're not talking about the administration, we're not talking about the government, we're not talking about the president. No, we're talking about everyone, everyone. So Egyptians back then, they felt that they were one. And that oneness, actually, I believe, it played a very significant role back then when actually, you know, 6th of October came. Right. Um, Dr. Montez, again, staying uh, w with the point of uh, a unity between uh, 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 military efforts and diplomatic efforts. How do you see the role of the Egyptian diplomacy unified with the military as Egypt's protection shield, embodying sacrifice, honor, and patriotism? And the two together, the way forward, not only for Egypt, but at least, at least not to make things get worse in the region as well. I don't really like what if, but I think I should use it, you know. Let's imagine the other way around. Mm. I got I, you. What if Egypt was What there? if? <laughs> no, what if what, what our if army it, yeah. was yeah. not there? Mm. Mm. What if I what did if there just... Was, well, yeah, what if there wasn't a country like Egypt? Exactly. I mean, with all its uh, okay. might yes. and history and, and, and The Egyptian and, army yeah. actually, you know, I believe in the entire region, it's mm. like, the, you know, it, the weights, the skills, you know, it's something mm. that's so actually important, balancing things. Mm. You know, because we are surrounded by different challenges, okay? Of course, you know, to have a strong army is like having a shield, a strong shield, mm -hmm. okay, that be able to feel that you're safe. And by the way, if you don't mind, I'd like to highlight this as well. Yes. Safety. Right. People, uh, they feel safe. By the way, that's not to be weighed against any amount of money. No way. Right. Okay, and by the way, okay, we hear and we see, you know, stories coming from different corners of the earth about some places in the world, okay, that not safe. Mm. And I believe that kind of feeling that's safe and you don't feel like threatened because you have a strong army. Mm. The army is out there. So Egyptians, and that's why their relation between people and the army is very strong because they feel that's what, yeah, we get it. We know that okay, you are on mission. I'm talking about people talking to the officers and soldiers. And officers and soldiers, on the other hand, they get it. Uh, after all, I mean, the army comes from within the people. After yeah, all, I get it, but I'm talking about they're, in, they're some, one, in some regimes, some countries, we don't feel or we don't see that this kind of unity, unity or yeah. cohesion. Yeah. So, but in Egypt, no situation actually, mm. I believe, is different. Mm. And we have been seeing this, okay, since I think in 1960s, I believe, I believe so. So, that kind of unity and cohesion is very important. Safety, security, and I think these are, uh, I think, the main priorities in army. And I need actually, once again, if you don't mind, to remind our dear viewers of uh, what happened in 2011. Mm. I still recall and what the Egyptian army did back then, you know, uh, as they went on the streets, you know, you know, they wanted to restore that kind of thing, the security, the feeling that what, no, don't worry, we are there, we are by your side, don't worry about anything. And I think that's a message that the Egyptian army sends Every, you know, on a daily basis to everyone in the country. Right. Dr. Montez, how do we get inspiration from uh, uh, the spirit of October uh, in accomplishing and in building modern Egypt? We, we need inspiration because maybe there is no better inspiration really than the 6th of October 1973. So how do we get inspiration there to continue to build uh, a modern Egypt? And I think, uh, as uh, President Sisi said today, it's like endless lessons, endless message from 6th of October. One crucial message in my mind is we don't have impossible. Egyptians actually, they don't believe in that word. Or in other words, that word is not in our dictionary. And that's why we need to tell everyone whatever the challenges we face, whenever we see those challenges, that word actually should be set before our eyes. That what, what happened in 1973, you know? So we should always say, 
okay, no to impossible. We did it before. We can do it again and again and again. We can build our country. We can actually, you know, restore the kind of spirit. We can actually always say that it's what the spirit, as you said, the spirit of 6th of October should be always there. That's one thing I find it very important. Another thing that is what, from 6th of October as well, planning. Let me go back to that word yes. because personally speaking, I, I find that word as very, very fundamental, especially nowadays. Yes. It's all about planning. It's all about that you sit at a table, okay, especially nowadays with the latest technology, I think it's not that difficult to plan out everything that we do in our life on a daily basis. So I think that's another message from 6th of October that should be always there before us. That's what planning is very crucial everywhere. We should believe in planning. And I do actually mean by planning, I re actually I want to say that, okay, long-term planning. By the way, we are actually, you know, we have to admit that sometimes we're really good at this. We sit at some table, we plan out some stuff, mm. and then, okay, at a short, okay, in a short period of time, we mm. change everything. Mm. No, we need actually to believe in long-term planning. We cannot make it without long-term planning. Because we see countries in the world, okay? And let me give that example. I think that's simply the story that happened in Japan. Yeah. You know, I think I read that story uh, like 10 years ago. Okay, surprisingly, they found, uh, you know, the local authorities in some Japanese cities, so the city, they were actually, you know, they decided to build what, a bridge in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. I think you heard that story. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere, they started building a bridge. And they said, okay, that people actually started wondering what, what's happening. And then the simple answer actually you know, came like that. They said that, okay, in 20 years' time, okay, that place would be highly populated. So instead of waiting, okay, actually, you know, in 20, 20 years' Amazing. time, we do yeah. it Amazing. now. Mm. So that proves my point that what long-term planning is very crucial, it's very important. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't give up on this. We should learn how to do this about what long-term planning. A third lesson from 6th of October, as you mentioned, cohesion. We should always believe in each one of us. Okay, rumors, I believe it's one of the toughest weapons ever. You know, okay, that it divides up, you know, that, and that's pretty dangerous. Okay, so... And let me actually give uh, an example that, okay, I, uh, that got me by surprise a couple of days ago. I was listening to the Israeli Prime Minister. In New he, York? Yeah, yeah. He made a speech in English, mm. okay, addressing the Iranian people. Mm. And actually I was shocked, you know. He appeared as a peacemaker. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you, are you, okay, you're joking. Okay, and I think you should be kind of what, okay, a Nobel Peace Laureate, maybe, okay, wow, okay, the, seriously, you're addressing the Iranian people and it seems that you do care. No way, no way. What I mean, the Haitian is important. People should be united because the next generation of the fifth, actually, no generation, were what something calls the social engineering. Mm. Okay, it's about the world from inside. Mm. When it comes to media, you know, the latest mm. and how actually, you know, other, you know, or is media. Mm. So I believe Egyptian people, a stern message or a stern warning, in other words, mm. then should be, you know, a priority. Okay, and that shouldn't be negotiable in my mind, you know, because region, we cannot make it if we are. So let's imagine that with the situation before 1973, and Egyptians were not one, were not one spirit, what, could, what would have happened in 1973? Egyptians have always been one, uh, Dr. Mugdi. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah, that. Our moments too, okay, when we feel that our morale is not okay, mm. okay, it's especially, mm. and I mean it, mm. that especially nowadays with media, with the stories, with fake news, mm. okay, with fears, mm. and I believe people should be very much alert. In mind, people should question everything. They should ask themselves, okay, about what media, about stories, about this, about that, and 
something else, of course, that has to do directly with the, okay, what we are discussing now, it's about trust. You lose trust, okay? And imagine, okay, let's say, okay, mm. you know, we are friends, but we don't have that kind of thing. Mm. So we're not friends, even. We're not family if we don't trust each other. Mm. And I'm talking about, okay, that level, okay, the family level. Right. How about, you know, that the nation's level, the national level itself, right. and we don't trust each other. And I, that's, that's very dangerous in my mind. That's something very, very important. I'm going to it, uh, back to it, uh, allow me, Dr. Montez, earlier in the episode when we, like Egyptians are, um, uh, are different, special. They are strong. They are resilient. They are patient. Don't test them. I mean, don't yeah. really test them to the limit because, I mean, they are not easy to, de they are not easy yeah. to deal with. I mean, we nation are smart nations. So part of the planning in the 73, I guess, was the deception. Yeah. Right? Very true. Yeah. 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 said that, get everybody fooled that, okay, we're not going to. Yeah. Football matches are often And that was amazing. Holidays. Hey, right? That was amazing. Yeah. Truly amazing right. back then. Yeah. Because that was part of the plan. Mm, so let's deception. deceive the enemy. Yeah. But I'd like to go back to what yeah. you mentioned, you yeah. know, about... Oh, yeah. Yeah, despite that, it, it doesn't seem like so. You know, first impression, Sometimes. you see that, okay, Sometimes. wow, mm. Mm, they might be kind of submissive, you know. No, that's kind of tricky, you know. Yeah. And as you said as well, let me quote you, never test us. Okay, it's something very dangerous. Yeah. Because we have seen throughout history that it's what are pretty and needed. I mean it, when needed. Absolutely. Okay. Because we only have a couple of minutes, so I just want to close with this, uh, Dr. Mumtez. So how uh, uh, can we work uh, to uh, ensure that the, the, the victory spirit remains alive and vibrant uh, uh, and conscious in the conscious and minds of successive generations? We want this to live on. Because you... you maybe um, and my, your generation and mine, yeah. uh, you know, caught up to something that had to do with this, but there are new generations now. We want this throughout generation after generation after generation. So I really like the question. Yeah. Okay, put it straightforwardly. Yeah. We need to keep on emphasizing the Egyptian identity. And I think that's the secret, okay, to everything. Egyptian identity should be always highlighted and I really, really like some Egyptians here that yeah. were released the years. Yeah. And I was really surprised mm. that what young men, mm. they were so keen to watch actually these movies or these mm. years actually very, okay, mm. very carefully. And then mm. what, seriously, mm. because they want to feel like mm. proud. By the way, younger youngsters and young generation, they want to actually feel this. And by the way, they are actually proud Egyptians. Mm. But the need, actually, we need always to emphasize this. That's why soft for it, media, once again, is very crucial. Movies, school, you don't forget schools. Absolutely. We, we, we want the future generations to be reminded always, uh, always of yeah. the ability yeah. of, of, of the Jew. The, that they, again, they don't believe in the word impossible. impossible. I mean, the ability of uh, uh, miracles. And definitely, we are um, uh, always happy when October comes around. Thank you very much, Dr. Mirad Montez, the foreign relations expert. Thank you. And thank you, dear viewers, for watching the daily Stay with Night TV.